The topic of today's video is an extremely important one and should address a lot of the frequent questions that I get regularly. It is important to teach a dog how to be calm and relax because unmanaged anxiety and excitement often lead to behaviors that are problematic for us. I want to explain and demonstrate today an idea and some techniques that I have constructed based on what we already know about the physiology and psychology of dogs. Dogs learn primarily by association. They make connections between objects, peoples, sounds, smells, and emotional states, and they remember those connections as they encounter them over and over again. Calmness is a state of mind that we'll define in this context as a relaxed presence. A dog who is calm looks obviously very different from one who is stressed or anxious. Proper regular exercise and consistent positive training are two ways to create this satisfied state in any dog. However, the challenge is often with puppies whose predispositions make them more difficult to manage and harder for them to concentrate. However, we are not helpless to this end as there are many concrete ways to help a dog who is more shy or anxious learn to be more social and calm. Calmness conditioning is the name for a set of techniques that I've coined, though I'm sure that there are many people who are familiar with them and use them successfully. What we're doing here is conditioning a dog to understand that calmness is a rewarding, pleasant, and useful emotional state. The first way to do this is by being prepared to reward your dog at very specific times throughout the day when they are choosing to show their calmness naturally. Yes. Notice how I swiftly yet calmly present her with a reward. My voice is not loud or engaging in the way you might hear it during the training session, but instead it is soft and reassuring. What I'm doing here is making an association for her between being in a relaxed state of mind and getting rewarded. You don't have to spend much time doing this repeatedly throughout the day. In fact, it's better not to. Once or twice should be more than enough. The emphasis with this technique is on the long term, what doing this consistently would do over a period of few weeks to a few months. It may seem strange to do this if this is the first time you're hearing it, but it is very important. Oftentimes, I see new or beginning level trainers who will ignore their dogs when they're doing really well, but be very quick to intervene with a correction as soon as they make a mistake. We want to balance our involvement with our dogs to be more equal between when they are making mistakes and when they are doing the right things. Massage and touch are the most powerful ways that we can communicate and bond with our dogs, which is why we use it so emphatically in training. Petting triggers the release of oxytocin in both dogs as well as humans, a hormone that has been linked to feelings of connectedness and love. To properly use this as a tool that can be used to bring on a state of relaxation, it has to be conditioned. This can be done by picking times that your dog is guaranteed to be relaxed and massage them so that they may associate being touched with a relaxed sympathetic nervous system. Times when I would specifically recommend doing this is after long walks, before bed, or any other time that you know your dog is tired or having a rest. Times when petting and massage should be avoided is if your dog appears to be anxious, excited, or fearful as you don't want to accidentally reinforce those states of mind. Finally, another very powerful way to teach your dog how to be calm is to teach them calming behaviors, first at home and then eventually in more difficult and distracting environments. To learn more about how to do this, you may follow the link on the screen to my tutorial on calming behaviors that demonstrates how to do this in just a few minutes. Thanks for watching and please make sure to subscribe, like and share this video.